Hi everybody, and welcome back to our HTML and CSS website video series. Today we'll be taking up part 6, working with CSS. Now last time, we worked on what CSS was. We took a look at what it could do and, and how we could use it. Now we're actually going to apply it to our website. So I've got my screen set up a little bit differently this time. You can see over here I've got my editor up, and this is just my web page document that we've been working on. I also have in a separate tab our new CSS document. And what we're going to do is start using this CSS page to style the content that is on this HTML document. And then over here on the right, I've got my website up in the browser just so we can watch as things happen. We can refresh our page and see what happens to it. Now we're going to be focusing today on a couple of different components of CSS using its selection methods to determine whether you want to do uh, styling for elements, for classes, or for IDs. Now, these are fundamental elements that you need to understand both for CSS and for JavaScript and other programming languages. Basically, the way that a website works, we have things like elements, things like the div element. We also have classes. Those are kind of subsets of these elements that participate within a, a similar function. So we may want it to look the same, it may do something similar, uh, and we use a class to determine that. There are also things called IDs, which we'll be getting into a little bit later, and those are unique. So to use an example, you might have a human being. Uh, that would be potentially our element level. Those element or those human beings may be, let's say, students and that might be a class. So a class of human being called students. Within that class you might have a particular student. So in this case uh, let's say John Smith. John Smith would be the ID of a individual within the class of students in the human being element. So it's kind of levels of specificity in some in some ways on that front. And that's how CSS works as well. So let's go to our CSS page and let's style our first element. And just for practice, let's style the div element. Now anything we put in here is going to affect our entire page, any page that's linked to this. So the My First Website HTML page, but also any other page we link to it. So it's very important to realize what you're doing when you're working with CSS. To style CSS in a separate page, you put what you want, so in this case our div element, and then a start bracket and an end bracket. You'll see my program pops up tooltips, but if you're just using a text editor, and you absolutely can, you would want to see something like this. This little empty space here is where we're going to start putting our style. So for now, this will be a little obnoxious in the visual area, but just to get a feel for it, Let's play around with some of the things we can do to divs. The first thing we'll do is put in a border. Now CSS only recognizes certain attributes and things that can be changed. So you have to kind of play around with it or find an, a reference ideally that would tell you what kind of things can be changed, what can be styled. Border is one of them. Type in the attribute you want in this case border, and then a colon. And the colon tells C the CSS page in the browser that what comes on the left is the attribute to be changed and what comes on the right is what it should be changed to look like. Here you'll see again, mine pops up little tooltips which are handy, but you don't need those in order to continue styling. So I'm going to say, let's do a one pixel black solid border. When you're done typing in the style that you want, you'll need a semicolon to tell the line end. Because what we can do from there is put more style in underneath. But for now, let's save this. Always save. Save frequently. And now I'm going to click over here on our website, and I'm just going to refresh the page. And you'll see already we've gotten a lot more structure in here. Now that may not be the structure we want, and we can always go around and play with this later, but you can see how CSS allows you to style a great number of things all at once. Every div on this page now has a border. 
Let's say, though, that we wanted to do something specific to our header. We don't want to affect every div on the page with this. For that, we'll need to use the class, since we have it defined as a class. We could also have ID here instead, if we preferred, because we'll only have one header on our page. But for now, since we've got it as class, let's work with class. I'm going to skip a line here. This is just to keep things kind of neat and tidy. I tend to do all of my elements, all of my classes, and all of my IDs in separate little spatial organizations. Uh, that may be, you know, a little fussy. To identify a class for CSS, we use a period and then the class name. And then, much like we did up here, open and close brackets. Make sure that your class name on your website is the same as the class name that you've identified here. And for now, why don't we just do a center alignment for our header. For that, we'll need to change the text align. So type in text dash align and then as above the colon. And then I guess I could just click this, but for those who don't have the handy tooltips, type in center, and then don't forget your semicolon at the end. Save your page, come on over here, and refresh your page. Again, any page that is attached to this style sheet will reflect these results. So let's say, for example, uh, you wanted to, you had a whole bunch of web pages and you were branding for your company and you suddenly decided I don't want to have my heading centered, I think I'm going to move it, let's say maybe you had a logo image or something here, all the way to the right. If you had styled it on each page, if we were doing the style on the page itself, we would have to open up every single web page that we had made and move it over to the right. If you've attached a CSS to it, Instead, you just open the CSS, go in, and let's say we want to move it to the right, save our page, refresh the page, and now it's over. And every web page attached would now show it on the right instead. So that's kind of the, the big power of CSS, is to allow you to unify your style across a number of pages. For our purposes, I've put the header back in the center because we don't have anything particularly you know, fascinating going on there. Last item that we'll cover in this video will be working with IDs. Let's click back in here. And here we have a class footer, class content. But what we really, really want to do to illustrate the difference here is to pick something we have items. So let's do this. In our little links, let's add a class to all of them. And let's call that class links. I'm very imaginative, as you can see. So all I did was hit space after the href, and then the href attribute and its value, and then type in class equals, and then our quotes, and inside the quotes, links. And I'm just going to copy that, including the space. I'm just going to paste it. If I save this page, and I come over here and refresh, you should see that nothing changes. All we've done is add a class to it. But if we come here to the CSS, we can then style that class. So I'm going to do my period for the class indicator, links, which is the name of the class. There's our open and close brackets. And let's remove the underline. By typing in text decoration, text dash decoration, always remember your colon to separate the attribute from the value you're changing, and none. And then your semicolon to finish it out save the page. When we come over here, 
Now all the underlines are gone from our links. But let's say I want one link to look special. Let's say link 1 needs to look different from the others. To do that, we'd want to give link 1 a more specific designation than the link element, the links class that we created. So we need something else, and that's where ID comes in. So now, I'm going to skip a space, I'm going to type in just ID equals our quotes as always, and let's call this special link. Save my page. To make sure I get it right, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to come over here. I've dropped down a couple spaces. Again, element, class, and ID. I keep them separate. The ID designator is the pound sign, uh, the little number sign. So type in pound, and then the name of the ID, and your open close brackets. What this allows us to do is to single out this special link that we want to look different. Whatever we type in here will now apply not to every div, not to the, every link, but instead to just the special link. So let's, uh, what should we do? Let's change the color to maroon. You can also use the hex number selector here if you prefer your hex numbers to get a better gradient of cover of color, but for our purposes, maroon will be just fine. Always remember, little semicolon, save our page, come over here, refresh, and now, I don't know if you can see that, that is now maroon. Let's do something that is a little more visibly different. Let's do font size. Uh, let's make it extra large. Now, mind you, these are not suggestions for making an aesthetically pleasing website. These are just for illustrative purposes. So, font-size, colon, x-large, semicolon to finish our line. And what this will do is tell it that special link should be larger. Save it, come over here, refresh, and now you can see that special link is in fact different from these other links. Using that, we can identify any element or divs, any class, such as our header class or our links, or any single uh, element that we choose to identify. And that gives us a lot of control over everything on the page. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Uh, next time we'll get into some of the other elements that can be changed, uh, adding background images and things like that. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you then.